This is John's gem number 134, drawn from the book of Revelation, chapter 4. The Creator God. Such a magnificent passage that I need to read all the 11 verses of it. No single one will do. After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. The voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here. I'll show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. The one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were twenty-four other thrones, and seated on them were twenty-four elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center round the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and behind. The first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, the third had a face like a man, the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all round, even under its wings. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is, <clears throat> and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne, and who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne, and worship him who lives for ever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. You created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. What a chapter! John tells us he saw a door standing open in heaven. First verse. Open is a key word in Revelation. John uses it to say that he is starting to tell us about a new vision he had. So it means something like, I'm opening up a new vision, a new story, and a wonderful one this is. In these next two chapters, John is going to paint word pictures. A Father God and Jesus Christ. He has told us about the disturbing atmosphere in which the seven churches are living, their dangers and difficulties, and also their opportunities. He is going to go on to talk about the terrible mess the human world has got itself into, and is still in today, because of the way the devil, Satan, is controlling so much of mankind. Only, finally, in his last two chapters, will he be able to talk about the wonderfully positive things towards which it will eventually all come. In this chapter particularly, he is doing the impossible. He is describing the indescribable. To do so, he uses much of the language of Ezekiel's first chapter. Ezekiel ends up by saying that he is describing the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord, thus shielding himself from any accusation 
that he was describing God. John might well do the same. Any attempt to make a painted or drawn picture out of his description would be foredoomed to disaster. Most of the attempts of the artists of former centuries do not portray Father God, but rather Grandfather God, or even Great Grandfather God, anyway. We cannot answer the question, what does God look like, both because we are unable to do so, and we are forbidden to do so. Yet we still have a wonderful picture in front of us. The things that surround the actual figure on the throne indicate how God is to be treated. The strange living creatures with the four different faces are the nearest things to the figure on the throne, and they lead the praise and worship. They may be strange, but they are a clear indication that it is not just human beings who worship the Lord God. All creation does. The twenty-four elders are usually reckoned to be indicating the twelve tribes of Israel and the people of God represented by the twelve apostles. Thus all the people of God. They have but one function. They are to worship. There is a double chorus of praise and worship going on continuously round the figure on the throne. The inner circle represents creation. The outer circle represents humanity. We are to praise because the creation rejoices in its creator as we rejoice in our saviour. The elders represent us who are his people. We are to work to earn crowns we do not deserve. That's from Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. But like the elders, we shall only use them to throw down before the great glory of the Lord God. They represent a great challenge for us all, to strive to have the best possible crowns, so that we throw the best possible gifts before the Lord God. Look forward to that day 